だなそうすか Finally, Universe 7's last hope is breaking the ultimate limit, a power that the gods of destruction struggle to even attain. As we all gawk over such an unbelievable success, we suddenly forget about everything else around it. And this week, there's so much more to point out about the Dragon Ball Super Episode 129 preview. So, Anna fam, I challenge you to a duel. Psych, but I am challenging you to see what the Dragon Ball Super creators have hidden for us this week as we wait and twiddle our thumbs for the ultimate Goku. Form. Ready? It's amazing what you can find out from a quick moving, almost too hard to see, tiny detail in a preview. Yet, that's exactly what we're seeing as Jiren prepares to make his counter attack. Notice the placement of his hands. Never seen that move from him before, have you? What we have seen from him, however, is something very similar. Now, when I say similar, I'm not referring to the movements his hands are making specifically, but rather the fact that this is something brand new to us from his character. In Dragon Ball Super Episode 128, Jiren acknowledged the amount of pride Vegeta had for fighting him with next to no energy. The fact Jiren pointed this out tells us that the force behind his attacks on Vegeta were more than likely nowhere near what he was using earlier. Consider all the times Universe 7's fighters have gone up against Jiren with very little energy. Now compare that to what we just saw in episode 128. Vegeta couldn't even go super sane. None of Universe 7's team members have been as drained while fighting Jiren as Vegeta was in this episode. You can see why Jiren has never had the need to use less harmful attacks. But now, that's exactly the corner he was forced into, causing him to use such a simple attack as a karate chop, an attack we've never seen him use before that moment. By now, I'm sure you're wondering, well, it's anime girl, what could a karate chop possibly have to do with Jiren's never before seen attack on an ultra instinct Goku? The fact that both that karate chop against Vegeta and this unknown attack against Goku are both new to us tells us the direction the rest of the episodes are going to take as far as learning more about Jiren's character goes. You see, now that we have a for real backstory on the Dragon Ball's most mysterious person ever, we've been starting to see tiny bits and pieces of his personality shining through. There was the smile, the huh look at Vegeta, the nani at Goku, and now both of these attacks. Yes, I do realize how tiny these details are. But remember how little information they gave to us about Jiren before Dragon Ball Super Episode 127 rolled along? I'll give you a quick reminder, they gave us nothing. So we have to be both grateful and very observant of any detail they do provide us with, no matter how small. But there's an even more important detail about his counterattack that we need to discuss. Pay close attention to what you're seeing here. More specifically, notice the position of Goku's body. See how he looks like he's laying down instead of standing? Now that Goku has access Ultra Instinct again. We see how impossible it is for Jiren to make contact, but there's really only one possible explanation for Goku to be in such a position, and that is that Jiren did make contact somehow. It's completely possible that Jiren pushed Goku away from him using that barrier from his eyes, but what if he did make physical contact? The reason I ask this is because the scene we see in the preview reminds me a lot of this which means that Jiren could be jumping up for a smackdown back onto the stage. How could that be possible? Well, considering you're watching this video about the Dragon Ball Super Episode 129 preview, I'm guessing you already know what else is coming for Goku. If he has an even greater form coming in the near future, then we already know his current Ultra Instinct Omen isn't the complete power. What does that mean? You guessed it, this form has its flaws. Jiren is the most OP enemy ever, so it's not like it's hard to imagine. Yes, he really should be able to pull off something like overcoming Goku at least once, even while using Ultra Instinct. Even more interesting is that proof was already given to us. Later in the preview, we can see that Jiren really does have the power to make contact with an Ultra Instinct Goku. When you look at it in slow motion, you can see Goku doing two separate things. He isn't just attacking Jiren, he's also blocking. Hmm, isn't that suspicious? wonder why he would need to block if he's using the ultimate technique for avoiding avoiding all danger, but hands down, the most eye-catching part of the preview had to be this. Who in the world created something like that? It wouldn't be Frieza's doing, or would it? That's when I backed it up and noticed all those sparklies. Wow, haven't we seen those before? In Dragon Ball Super Episode 123, Goku was attempting to throw Jiren off by popping up in unexpected spots through the use of instant transmission. This wasn't the only thing he was doing though. Goku shocked me beyond belief. It's 
Not like he's the smartest cookie in the tool shed. Wait, what? There's one thing I've always known about Goku, however, and that's that when it comes to a good battle, all the smarts come oozing out of that tiny monkey brain. He had secretly also planted a ton of energy sparks, ready to go off anytime Jiren was lucky enough to step on one. The similarities to what we see in the preview is unmistakable, and we actually get confirmation that these are the same energy sparks when all those rocks blow up. But did you notice? What in the world was the streak of light? First thing to pop in my tiny monkey brain was gotta be something to do with his new form. Just look at that glorious streak of shininess. This could easily be the leftover energy from one of Goku's attacks. That is until I paid more attention to the motion his body was moving in. Goku's body isn't even going in the same direction that the streak of light is. Therefore, they are completely unrelated. I did notice, however, that it's moving along with the sparks on the left set of rocks to the ones on the right. For now, let's focus on the other move Goku will be bringing back to the playing field next week. This particular attack is so important to talk about. The reason for this is because it gives us a glimpse into how much more power Ultra Instinct Omen has given to Goku compared to the other two times he's tapped into it. Goku gets up close and personal with Jiren using his handy dandy Kamehameha wave. Although Jiren doesn't seem to be affected by an attack that threw k flat out of the ring in about 1.5 seconds, this clip does provide proof that Goku has most definitely gotten much much stronger than even just two episodes ago. In fact, who else noticed that we just saw this same exact attack in Dragon Ball Super episode 127? The huge difference between that attack and this one is, Goku was only in Super Saiyan Blue at the time. You saw how quickly Jiren erased that Kamehameha wave, right? Then compare the amount of time that attack lasted to the attack shown in the preview. It's clear that Goku is able to hold it there for quite some time. Proof of the gap in power between his Super Saiyan Blue to his his third occurrence of Ultra Instinct Omen. But no matter how much stronger Goku has gotten, you can't ignore the story found in both Goku and Jiren's faces. Jiren looks slightly more upset at this point, but Goku's face is a little more telling, go figure. When awakening Ultra Instinct for the third time, Goku had that look like, I am now unbeatable. Come at me with all you got. But that's not the face we see now. This is the look of worry. Worried about what, you may ask? There shouldn't be too much to be worried about when you have a technique under your belt that will move your body out of harm's way for you. But remember what we just said a minute ago. This Ultra Instinct Omen has its flaws, leading us to wonder how exactly Goku will master Ultra Instinct. Well, the Kamehameha wave couldn't last forever against the monster of all monsters. Jiren's attack sends Goku flying backwards, but what you really should be paying attention to is right behind Goku's back. Those are pieces of his shirt tearing off, and we all know what that means. I believe this attack will heavily injure Goku, awakening the realization that the same old Ultra Instinct Omen that didn't work against Jiren before isn't going to work this time either. Goku will be left with only one option, go big or go get erased. Seems simple until I show you this. Look behind Goku. No, not the rock. Behind that tall cliff, there is a purple light reflecting off those cliffs. Isn't that just from the sky? Yes, it could be, but there's a reason that I have very high suspicions of this reflection coming from the topo-infected purple sky. Look at the top of the cliff. Hmm, no purple. It's also important to note the reflection has a circular shape to it. Am I reaching? Hmm, maybe. But I'm sorry. There are too many coincidences sitting right in front of my very realistic wide anime eyeballs for me to just not mention it. So if this is really something similar to what we've seen before, then where exactly am I going with this? There are two things that this could mean. Frieza originally gave some of his purple energy to Goku because he couldn't even move at that point. But now, Goku's already achieved Ultra Instinct again, so he doesn't need any more energy, right? We all know what kind of person Frieza is. Sneaky, sneaky, sneaky. He's so good at this that he managed to make the writers of Dragon Ball Super forget to put him in the spoilers. Why? Because they clearly forgot he's still not eliminated yet. Even I was panicking along with the Supreme Kai about Goku being our last hope. But let's get real. It's clear they want us to forget about Frieza, which means this could be him hiding behind a rock 
preparing for whatever scheme he's up to now. Do I think we'll see Frieza again in episode 129? I wouldn't rule it out, but not really. Which means we may have just found the biggest Easter egg since last year's egg hunt at Grandma's. But let's not forget the second option this could mean for Frieza. Remember, this attack has me super worried about Goku. Quite honestly, Jiren's character has felt hugely nuts the past two weeks. But you know what would redeem such an amazing power? Jiren knocking Goku right out of Ultra Instinct. Just imagine Universe 7's fear then, as well as our own. But then here comes Frieza, reminding Goku that he needs his biggest rival to continue working for him. And with that, he gives away his energy one last time. And bam, we get the largest power-up we've ever seen. The wind around our brave warrior clears up to reveal the white hair that I am so happy doesn't look like it did on paper. That's something I need the Anafam to help me with. So tell me your thoughts in the comments, or even better, in the super active Anafam Discord server. The link to join is in the pinned comment.